Bhavi was suffering from a skin infection and was advised by his doctor to take a course of erythromycin, an antibiotic produced from the bacteria Streptomyces erythris. Antibiotics are drugs that prevent and treat infections caused by bacteria and fungi. A majority of the antibiotics are made from living organisms like bacteria and fungi. while others are produced wholly or partly synthetically. Today, there are over 8,000 antibiotics known to science, which are used in the treatment of several infections. The table here shows some important antibiotics, their bacterial sources and the diseases that they treat. A good antibiotic must be capable of destroying a variety of disease-causing microorganisms. However, it should neither kill the useful bacteria present in the host's body, nor cause any side effects in the host. Apart from being used as drugs, antibiotics are also useful for preserving food especially fish and meat. They are also useful for controlling plant pathogens and for treating animal feed. Bacteria, in addition to playing a useful role in the production of antibiotics, also play a useful role in the production of serums, vaccines and toxoids. A serum is blood plasma from which the fibrinogen has been separated. It is made of chemical substances like the antitoxins or antibodies of a specific pathogen and is used as a preventive measure to activate the immune system against a specific disease. The method of preparing a serum is quite unique and interesting. In this method, a small dose of a bacterial toxin is injected into the blood of a healthy cow or a horse. The cow or horse produces antitoxins to neutralize the effect of the toxin. Continuing with the process, the animal is given several injections of the same toxin. After this, the blood containing the antitoxins is drawn out and chilled. During the chilling process, an amber, watery fluid rich in proteins, which is the serum, separates from the blood. In fact, the same method of preparing a serum from a horse is followed to produce antivenoms which are used to treat snake bites. Did you know that today, genetic engineering has made it possible to introduce human genes into certain bacteria like Escherichia coli? Bacterial cultures grow quickly and allow us to extract specific gene-dependent products or serum compounds from them. The first serum compound produced from bacteria was the hormone insulin. Today, several serum compounds are available. These include blood clotting factor 8 for the treatment of hemophilia A and blood clotting factor 9 for the treatment of hemophilia B. Apart from serums, Bacteria also play an active role in the production of several vaccines. A vaccine is any germ or germ substances introduced into the body to help it develop resistance to a particular disease. On injecting a vaccine, the person gets a mild form of the disease 
and the body is stimulated to produce antitoxins that provide immunity to the body against future attacks by the specific disease causing germ. Some common vaccines include the TAB vaccine for typhoid produced from dead bacteria and the BCG vaccine for tuberculosis produced from live weakened bacteria. Bacteria are also useful in the production of toxoids which are toxins extracted from bacteria. After extracting a toxin, its toxicity is suppressed by treating it chemically or by using heat while retaining its useful properties. Some diseases that are treated using toxoids are diphtheria and tetanus. In addition to the medical field, bacteria also play a useful role in agriculture. All plants require nitrogen to synthesize proteins. However, they cannot make use of free atmospheric nitrogen directly and can absorb it only in the form of nitrates from the soil through their roots. Certain nitrogen fixing bacteria like rhizobium, a special type of soil bacteria found in the root nodules of leguminous plants, help in this process. These bacteria pick up free nitrogen from the soil and atmosphere and convert it into soluble nitrates which are used by the host plant as well as by other plants sown later in the same soil. There is another process in which nitrogen is waste from dead plants and animals present in the soil is converted into nitrates with the help of bacteria. This is called nitrification. In this process, certain ammonifying bacteria like bacillus and clostridium first convert nitrogenous waste into ammonia. This ammonia is then converted into ammonium compounds by the same ammonifying bacteria. The ammonium compounds are then converted into nitrites by nitrifying bacteria such as nitrosomonas and then into nitrates by nitrifying bacteria such as nitrobacter. In addition to the ammonifying and nitrifying bacteria, certain useful denitrifying bacteria like Pseudomonas putida and Bacillus subtilis are also present in the soil. These bacteria break down nitrates in the soil and release free nitrogen gas, which then enters the atmosphere. Thus, nitrogen fixing ammonifying, nitrifying and denitrifying bacteria play a useful role in agriculture and in the nitrogen cycle. Bacteria also play a very useful role in industry. Certain bacteria are used to produce different flavors of tea, which is known as tea curing. Similarly, certain bacteria produce enzymes that help to soften leather during the tanning process. Another industrial use of bacteria is in the retting process, where bacteria and moisture is used on plants to loosen fibers from body tissue. Besides playing a useful role in medicine, agriculture and industry. Bacteria also play an important role in performing functions like decay, putrefaction and 
synthesis of vitamins and minerals. One of the most important uses of bacteria in nature is for decay and putrefaction. Decay is the complete breakdown of organic matter by bacteria without producing any foul smell. While putrefaction is the incomplete breakdown of organic matter by bacteria giving out a foul smell. Every minute, thousands of plants and animals die. Moreover, all living organisms eliminate organic excreta at regular intervals. It is only with the help of bacteria that the dead bodies and the excreta are broken down into simpler chemical compounds. Like sulfates, nitrates and carbon dioxide, which are then used by plants for growth. Bacteria also play a useful role in the treatment of sewage. One example is thermophilic bacteria, used to decompose human excreta collected in sewage treatment plants, especially in big cities. The gases produced during the treatment are used for cooking, while the liquid and solid products are used as manure in fields. Another use of bacteria is in gober gas or biogas plants where the cellulose in cow dung is degraded by fermenting bacteria to produce cooking gas and manure. There are also certain useful bacteria in our intestine that help in the production of vitamins, primarily those belonging to the vitamin B complex group and vitamin K. Similar bacteria are also present in herbivorous animals and help in the digestion of cellulose. Here, the bacteria and the herbivorous animal shares a symbiotic relationship. Thus, not all bacteria are harmful. Many of them are of great economic importance.